We know Kang the Conqueror will be the main bad guy in Marvel's phases 4 through 6, but he is still very young. At the end of Loki, we meet the talkative He Who Remains, who was a version of Kang. He told us that a bad version of Kang was coming. So, in Avengers The Kang Dynasty, how does Marvel Phase 6 lead up to Secret Wars? This and more in today's video. First, who is Kang the Conqueror? Kang is the most comic book-like character you've ever seen in a comic book. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby introduced Kang the Conqueror in Avengers No. 8 from 1964. He is a bad guy from the 31st century who travels through time and often fights the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. In his first fights with the Avengers, he did normal things like hold them for ransom or send them to different points in time. Just as important, he is very good at looking bad while sitting on a futon or a divan. Kang's adventures through time got more and more complicated over time to the point where he now has multiple versions of himself running around. In addition to Kang Prime, the most famous are the Egyptian pharaoh Rama Tut, Immortus, Lord of Limbo, and Iron Lad, a young Kang who designed Iron Man's armor and started the Young Avengers. Kang's secret identity is Nathaniel Richards, a descendant of the time traveler Nathaniel Richards, who was the father of Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. This makes things even more confusing, aren't they? One of Kang's most famous plans against the Marvel heroes happened in Avengers number 41 through number 55, 2001 to 2002. In the 16 part Kang Dynasty story, which was written by Kurt Busiek and drawn by Alan Davis, Kieran Dwyer, Manuel Garcia, and others, Kang makes an offer to the Earth. After seeing how Earth fell apart in different realities, Kang decides that the only way to protect the planet and make sure humanity keeps getting better is to become its sole ruler. Not surprisingly, the people turn him down, but Earth's defenses fall apart because Atlantis, the Eternals' enemies, the Deviants, and the Master of the World, a super-evolved caveman who mostly fights Canadians, attack all the time. Once more, comics. Kang takes over Earth and makes everyone work for him by sending an army of Sentinels that have been reprogrammed to hunt mutants. Months later, the Avengers led a comeback that ended with a kaiju battle between a huge Captain America and Kang in space. How does the Kang Dynasty connect to the Secret Wars? As we know from Phase 4 and the news about Phase 5, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in a lot of trouble. The world still hasn't gotten over losing Iron Man, Black Widow, and Steve Rogers. It also hasn't fully dealt with what happened when half the universe came back after the five-year blip. New heroes join the fight, but the public doesn't trust them, like Sam Wilson as Captain America, or they have trouble getting along with each other, like the Eternals. Wakanda has done its part to share its advanced technology and culture with the rest of the world. However, the loss of King T'Challa and an attack from Atlantis in Black Panther Wakanda Forever will surely cripple them. If Doctor Doom is secretly involved, this will be even worse for the world. In Phase 5, things don't seem to be getting any better. In short, Earth's defenses will be weak for the next couple of years. Kang will probably come to Earth, which has been hurt and beaten up, and give them a choice. They can accept his rule and be safe, or they can rebel and face even worse threats that could destroy the universe. Kang will win and rule for a while, but like in the comics, the Avengers will band together and lead a counterattack, which will hopefully end with a kaiju fight between Kang and Captain America. But it's funny that a bad guy who can go back in time might not always be lying. What if Kang is really trying to stop the end of the world by doing crazy things? Kang could be the only thing that can protect Earth from invasions, but when the Avengers come back to get rid of him at the end of the Kang Dynasty, they may accidentally bring about the end of the universe and start the final Secret Wars. So in a way, the Avengers may end up being the main bad guys in the multiverse saga. Kang the Conqueror can be the MCU's best villain. Kang the Conqueror by Jonathan Majors is the perfect mix of all the major Avengers bad guys like Loki, Thanos, and Ultron. Nathaniel Richards is unique because each version of him who travels through time has its own personality and goals. The bad guys in the MCU have shown that they are just as important to the franchise as the heroes. Kang the Conqueror is going to be as smart as Loki, as scary as Ultron, and as strong as Thanos. Since he will be the main bad guy in the next two Avengers movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, Avengers The Kang Dynasty, and Avengers Secret Wars, these traits will come in handy. These traits also show how the Avengers' previous bad guys could have been better. Kang the Conqueror's multiversal variants, which let him avoid dying, can help Loki improve his strategy for coming back from the dead. Kang's death could be undone not through magic or luck, but by replacing him with a different version. Unlike Ultron, Kang's sad beginning as a bad guy can be explored slowly, as his hatred of the Avengers can be shown in a good way over the course of several movies. And as for the Mad Titan, Kang can't do much to beat Thanos' victory in Avengers Infinity War, but his role in Avengers Secret Wars could be bigger and more complicated than Thanos' full-on villain role in Avengers Endgame. Kang the Conqueror is definitely set up to be a force to be reckoned with. In fact, he plays such a big part in the franchise that it was decided that he would be the main bad guy even before the Avengers were put together. In the multiverse saga, it's clear that Kang is getting ready to take over.
over, and the similarities between Kang the Conqueror and other Avengers villains only make his arrival more exciting. Marvel already spoiled Avengers Kang Dynasty in Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War gave away too much about Avengers the Kang Dynasty. The 2018 blockbuster, which Joe and Anthony Russo directed, was called by many to be the best MCU movie. It changed the franchise in more ways than one. Aside from the ending, which caused a lot of buzz, it showed that a crossover event with a lot of characters can work without being confusing or emotional. Inadvertently, Avengers Infinity War also gave away plot points from Avengers the Kang Dynasty. Destin Daniel Creighton's Avengers the Kang Dynasty doesn't have many plot details yet, but as the title suggests, it will pay off the MCU's plan for Kang the Conqueror to be a major villain in the franchise. The next movie would be Avengers Secret Wars, which still doesn't have a director. Technically, the multiverse saga is not part of the Infinity Saga. However, the first chapter of the MCU tells us what to expect from the next one, especially after what happened in Avengers Infinity War. Thanos, who was played by Josh Brolin, beat the Avengers for many reasons, but one of the biggest ones was that they didn't work together. In Avengers Infinity War, Iron Man and Captain America fought the Titans separately, while Thor was busy on a side quest until he showed up in Wakanda at the last minute. Before Avengers The Kang Dynasty, there was no Earth's Mightiest Heroes team-up movie that set up a clear roster. This means that everyone would have to get together in the movie itself. Based on what happened in Avengers Infinity War, this leads to another heartbreaking loss for the Avengers. Since it's almost impossible for a poorly put together and untested team of superheroes, to beat Kang the Conqueror. Finally, Kang needs to defeat the Avengers to not ruin Infinity War. In Avengers Infinity War, there is still some disagreement about why Thanos won. Since fighting the bad guy together was the only real change for the group in Avengers Endgame, it's possible that they could have won the first battle against the Titan if they had worked together from the start. In Captain America Civil War, Captain America and Iron Man were put against each other on purpose so they would lose in the end. Since Earth's Mightiest Heroes are in bad shape in the multiverse saga, it's important that Kang the Conqueror beats them in Avengers the Kang Dynasty so that Avengers Infinity War doesn't seem less important. If this new team of Avengers, which hasn't worked together before and hasn't spent much time together, manages to beat Kang the Conqueror, it would invalidate the main reason why their predecessors lost to Thanos in the first place. Now, Marvel Studios has to figure out how to do this without just doing what has already been done. Since the endings of Infinity Saga and Multiverse Saga seem to be set up in the same way, it's hard not to compare them. But Marvel Studios needs to figure out how to make Avengers the Kang Dynasty different from Avengers Infinity War without ruining the movie. Even if the situation is different, it's important that Phase 6 doesn't accidentally hurt what came before. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Make sure to like and follow for more great news. Till next time, cheers!